you like dinosaurs? Me too. Journey with me to the land of the dinosaurs, the legendary plains of Crystal Palace. The tale of the dinosaurs' remarkable survival begins way back in the very mists of time. The year of the Great Exhibition. The biggest party the world has ever seen. An international celebration of technology, achievement, and discovery. But where to hold the blessed thing? A uh, crystal palace in Hyde Park, perhaps? This iron and glass wonder was so popular, it was moved to a brand new, permanent home in South London. But oh no! An unexplained cloakroom explosion unleashed disaster. This is the end of an age. Nothing remains of the Crystal Palace except ruins. Now trekking through Crystal Palace Park, we've reached the object of our quest, Dinosaur Court a prehistoric ecosystem landscaped into the Victorian pleasure grounds. And behind me, a magnificent herd of Iguanodon, the first dinosaur statues ever created, built by Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins in 1854 to accompany the Crystal Palace. In the water, we encounter Ichthyosaurus, Labyrinthodon, and Plesiosaurus. I think I can see. Ah, uh, yes, that's it. Pterodactyl, ready for takeoff. If we look this way, and there, Hyliosaurus, making a dash for it. This would suggest the presence of a large carnivore nearby. Ah, uh, yes, somewhere in this swamp lurks the star of the show, Megalosaurus one of the most feared predators on this planet. That's a bit harsh. Now Hawkins also created other prehistoric beasts such as this Megalosaurus herd behind me here, some of the most accurate statues in the menagerie. Not all of them were as accurate as this, however. For example, this Megalosaurus here was initially thought of to be a heavy quadruped, much like an elephant. Of course, we now know it was a bipedal theropod, like the Tyrannosaurus rex was. We know since the discovery of complete iguanodon skeletons in 1878, the creature had a distinctive thumb spike, possibly for fending off predators. However, in 1858, early paleontologists chose to interpret the spike as a horn on the creature's nose, very much like a modern-day rhinoceros. Zing! Personally, I think these differences just add to the Victorian Gothic allure of these incredible sculptures. After all, could you hold a dinner party inside a real iguanodon? Hawkins celebrated the unveiling of his dinosaurs with this New Year's Eve feast. He said, Saurians and pterodactyls all, Dream ye ever in your ancient festivities of a race to come, dwelling above your tombs, dining on your ghosts. <laughs> <laughs>